Hey guys, this is Tom with DraftMagic.com and I'm having another look here at the LOL Armor deck. Made a couple changes here. Really been, been kind of thinking about how to really maximize this deck's success and what I found was that cards like Primal Hunt Beast, while still in the hexproof theme, just don't really pack enough power um, kind of for what we're trying to do here. So, I kind of got to thinking about ways to dodge removal and one of the cards that jumped out at me as being a very strong standout was Loxodon Smiter. Now Loxodon Smiter is still affected by uh, a number of different removal including Mizium Mortars, uh, Detention Sphere, Azorius Charm, and then if I add any auras to it, uh, Selesnya Charm. Um, in addition there may be a other couple uh, removal that I haven't mentioned, but um, the nice thing is that he does dodge some of the more common ones. He's able to dodge Pillar of Flame, Searing Spear, and uh, I believe also the Jun deck runs Ultimate Price. Um, you know, so he does dodge some removal, but more importantly, he wins creature fights and he does it quite well. Especially one of the the banes of this deck. Um, has really been Restoration Angel just by getting rid of pacifism effects and then blocking uh, Geist of St. Traff. So the nice thing about Loxodon Smiter is he wins against Angel in a fight. He's still able to trade with Ragtusk, um, well at least for the main body, and then does very well against Green-White Aggro also. In addition, the ability to come in uncounterable um, really is quite good, especially now that the meta has shifted again, and one of the top decks right now is blue-white, more or less um, blue-white pike, running I believe two to three copies of Rune Chanter's pike, and I think it runs. Um, let's see if I can pull up the list here. It's like blue-white mid-range. Um, let's take a look. And this is something I've been kind of doing just to sort of help um, really prepare this deck. Is looking at what the field um, really consists of. So this is kind of one of the winning lists recently, um, or similar to it, essentially running Thought Scour, Unsummon, um, and then the, the main creature base is Augur, Bolas, Snapcaster, Restoration Angel, and then just kind of getting more advantage in counter spells and other nonsense and winning with Pike. Um, and then it's able to board into Geist of St. Traff, which is particularly painful in our matchup. Um, simply because it's one of our main workhorses. And so if you look back at our deck, one of the changes that I've made is I've made a move to include Clone as a diff as basically um, kind of insurance against decks with Geist, and it's also great against Thrag Tusk, so it has you know multiple purposes. Um, it's good at getting rid of Olivia Voldaren in the Jun matchup, so that it does have some usage. Um, changed the board a little bit. I had been running ground seal, and I found out that it just wasn't really doing enough. Uh, the problem was in the zombie matchup, it did basically nothing except cycle, and then, um, you know, it's not obviously all that good against, like, think twice, and if they were able to get rid of it, they could still activate their graveyard. It does nothing against Rune Chanter's Pike. The nice thing about Rest in Peace is it really is quite final. It really just removes the yard, um, totally shuts down zombies, and also does a great job against um, four color rights, and more importantly, completely neutralizes Rune Chanter's Pike. So I think it you know really gets the nod here. I had been missing Azorius Charm just for the lifelink, just because in some of the more aggro matchups, um, ended up getting behind, and then I would have been able to come back if I had lifelink, but wasn't able to do so, and so I really missed having Charm or access to it. I still think having two Supreme Verdict is probably correct, because decks like Azorius Aggro, Red Deck Wins, um, Green White Aggro as well, can all just completely just just gum up the board with huge threats. Um, one of the major problems that this uh, deck faces is cards like Sublime Angel, or um, Silverblade Paladin, 
and pacifying those isn't really going to do anything. So being able to just get rid of them uh, really helps. I also made the change of adding in one erase, and I really like this because number one, it gives us some more viability against Ranker in the green-white matchup, and then also it's good at taking down opposing detention spheres, um, which is quite relevant, especially in the blue-white matchup. Ended up doing some uh, practicing, lost a match to the blue-white deck um, after getting blown out by Detention Sphere, losing two of my blocks on Smiters. So hopefully this will be a good change here. Um, I think that Pacifism is still stronger than Deprivation just because it's a little bit less narrow and it's great against Thrag Tusk. This may be a little bit too much removal. We'll kind of sort of test and find out, but we are going to be going into uh, two-man queue here, and I'm really looking forward to um, trying to make time this weekend to either run a four-man daily um, or potentially getting ready for running um, like a standard uh, premier event or possibly a PTQ. So we'll be preparing for that. But should be ready here in just a moment. Okay, so we're going to be on the play. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Decent opening hand. I mean, we definitely have action here on three. Definitely going to keep. We have the turn two stalker into ethereal armor with sensory deprivation backup. So, pretty excited about this hand here. And if we can pick up one more land, I should be in good shape with the Loxodons pulling up the rear. Okay, so we're up against either junk tokens um, or more likely green white aggro. So here, I mean, we could, you know, play this, come in tapped, um, not play the stalker. But I think I'm rather just going to chance it here, go ahead and drop the planes, and then, you know, there's going to be a chance that I'll have to pay two life and drop locks it on. But I think getting the jump on stalker is going to be worth it. So we are up against junk tokens here, or possibly three color reanimator. So we most likely should be expecting Thrag Tusk next turn, and we'll have the Pacifism ready to go. I guess it is going to be three color, three color rights. But I mean, him bringing back Thrag Testing, we're more or less fine with that. Okay, so now we can go ahead and pacify the Thrag Tusk bash in and drop down armor. We could also just drop Geist here, but I think just swinging in is going to be fine. And then I think that we want to... Let's see, so we bring back another... Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, so I think we just want to go ahead and drop armor on the smiter here. Well, could potentially have removal. Hmm. No, I think I'm going to put Ethereal Armor on the Stalker instead. That way we can just use Sensory Deprivation to get there next turn if he has a blocker.
Then this way we've got a reliable clock in case he has tokens or nonsense. That is unfortunate. That's pretty awkward, not gonna lie. So here I think we do want to take the 2 damage, then use deprivation to shrink the beast a little bit, and then drop down, locks it on number 2. Yeah, so simple bowls is pretty rough, especially with pacifism. Okay, so now... I mean, we could just start bashing in here. Um, let's see. Just gonna start swinging back, so we basically trade... Yeah, trade locks it on. That's fine, I think. We're at 16, we could just kind of you can keep like one locks on back to kind of hold back the little guys here and then just drop Geist. He's at 21, we're at 16. Yeah, I think we're just going to go ahead and swing in with these two and just kind of see what he does. The unfortunate problem here is that if, with a pretty full hand here, he most likely has ways to keep recurring Thrag Tusk. It might be better just to get in with Stalker, but I mean we're going to block Thrag Tusk if he attacks, so might as well get in. At this point we could really use a couple cards, Spectral Flight would be great here, and I think here we just definitely make the block. He's probably got Angel, and that's fine. Or more Graveyard Recursion.
guess we get blown out here by Disciple if he's got it, but not a lot we can do. And here we're trading 3 damage for 3 damage, but I think that's fine. We'll just push. Garrick is pretty rough, not gonna lie. And I think we need to. I was gonna say we need to suicide the guys. So here, if we pacify Beast, I mean, we, he could have Angel here, which he almost most certainly has. And then we would basically be trading Geist for these two if he doesn't have it. But otherwise, we trade Geist and take out Garrick, and we keep pushing. I think it's actually better to kind of play this one on the safe side. Um, hmm. Because like, if he does have Angel, he blows us out and just comes back for a ton of damage. I mean, if he's got Angel, we're kind of screwed anyways. Is the problem. So he swings back for three, five at least. I think we have to assume he does not have Angel. So if he has Angel, we're pretty much just out of it. Okay. And we're happy to trade these two for Geist. And it looks like he does have Angel. Yep. And so we're going to get blown out. So we actually do not kill Garrick. And that might just do it right there. So coming in from the board, um, just because he's got so much nonsense at Thrag Tusk. Yeah. Let's see, what are, what is our plan? Definitely want to be bring in clone. Verdict is okay. Um, Nevermore for Thrag Tusk. Rest in peace. Tension sphere seems good. Potentially could bring in Verdict. Um, kill all of his little one mana dorks. And then with Centaurs, I mean, Deprivation is it's still fine. Hmm. What do we want to cut? I think armor does a little bit more work here. 
kind of being offensive and defensive. I think Rancor is not as strong here, just because he doesn't really have removal effects and, and we don't want to be trading with guys. We want to be winning those fights. Like it's, it's definitely fine. It's just um, looking at cards you want to cut. I think we may want to cut Rancor here. Keep in pacifism. Deprivation still seems fine. <clears throat> so maybe we just like, cut one stalker. Probably shave down a cavern of souls and then maybe cut like a deprivation. Okay, pretty happy with this open. And we definitely need to land here. So here comes Thrag Tusk. Ugh, this is just painful. Okay. We would probably cast Nevermore for Restoration Angel if we get a chance. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, didn't. Jesus Christ. Didn't even see the pacifism. That was a major misplay. There's the land, a little bit late. More than a little late. Um, we really needed that pacifism to be in effect. Now we can just use Vault to push it over the top, so we can't even effectively block. And O-Ring is going to do it. So unfortunately didn't get there. But uh, going to do probably one or a couple more here. Trying to see if we can uh, up the play level a little bit. Uh, missing that passivism was pretty painful. But um, 
and then just kind of see how it plays out against some of the matches.